Dave Saltonstall, senior correspondent for the Daily News, and Governor pa Patterson got back to the business of trying to be governor today. He had a, a town hall meeting at Brooklyn Borough Hall where he took a lot of questions from a lot of people who were concerned about the budget. He also made some interesting slips. He, uh, he started out by saying he was glad to be back right here where I grew up in Brooklyn. The governor, of course, did not grow up in Brooklyn. He grew up in Long Island. Uh, so it was a head-scratching moment for a lot of people there, but here it is. Thank all of you enough for taking out time to come to this town meeting right here where I grew up in Brooklyn. Thank you. Governor Patterson, of course, remains the focus of two major ethical investigations, one involving allegations that he intervened in the, a domestic violence case against one of his top aides, David Johnson. Today, Governor Patterson remained defiant. Rumors and innuendo, but it hasn't stopped me. Recently, I've been also the target of special interest uh, uh, commercials, $8 million of them, but it hasn't stopped me. And I've also been the target of a lawsuit when I took an action to prevent the state from running out of money last December, but that hasn't stopped me. Other elected leaders got in on the act as well. City Councilman Charles Barron got up at one point and said one of the solutions to the state's deficit problem needs to be taxing wealthy residents more. Taxing the rich, selling state assets and property. If you have to borrow, I know that hurts bonding ratings and all of that, but we can't say that the rich get a, a pass on this because for some strange reason, people don't want to tax the rich. Governor Patterson suggested that might not be such a good idea as the state went down that road last year and the result was many New Yorkers established residency in Florida to avoid paying the higher taxes here. Um, the problem is that the, the, there are other laws you would have to address because what you see people, and they have the resources to do this, they'll say they moved to Florida, which means they spent one more day in Florida a year than they spent in New York, and for that they don't pay any taxes at all. And to prove that, we projected that our income tax would yield $4.1 billion. We only got $3.6 billion because uh, people who were loyal to New York uh, and could have afforded the taxes suddenly became disloyal to New York uh, and moved to Florida, and with the exception of Rush Limbaugh, that was bad for us. <laughs> but perhaps the toughest pitch the governor made was saying he wanted to try and restore your trust in government. He said, we want you to believe that when your government tells you something, it's true. We want to try to restore your trust in government. We want you to believe that when the government tells you something, it's true. And we also want you to believe that when you um, uh, address government, that there'll be a response. Uh, we will respond to all of you individually, uh, and thank you so much for coming. But I just want you to know that uh, there have been times just as difficult in this city and times just as difficult in this state. Well, today, he was very smart. His answers were very astute. He showed a good sense of humor. But I've never thought the problem was the governor. I think the problem is the state legislature. I mean, it's incredible, like, to have the courage to cut, make those type of cuts and still have an air open to maybe there's a better way of doing it. Maybe I'm not the person that's, you know, maybe I don't have the best ideas. Maybe my people can learn something from the public. So I appreciate the opportunity for him to hear from us. And like I said, in this tough economic time, I think this is the person that we need, you know, at the home. I About the budget, um, you know, as far as the governor, I think he should stay. And the reason is all the damage has been done. Uh, it's got to be a little bit liberating that he's not running for re-election, so you need someone like that, I think, who can make the tough choices without worrying about being re-elected. It's like, you know, if there's any blessing in disguise to the whole situation he's dealing with now, it's the fact that he's not running for re-election. You need someone who can make those tough choices. I, I question whether a guy who comes in and has got his eye on the next term is going to be able to make those difficult choices to fix the budget.